We are now recording the Chaos DNI Working Group meeting from June 3rd, 2019. Welcome, everyone. Two agenda items. One is ChaosCon submission for the DNI Working Group. The other is to work on metrics for release. So let's open a Google Doc and decide what we want to do for the ChaosCon DNI workshop. Or whether we want to do that at all. So maybe there's another opinion that we don't do anything. And I think we should also talk about whether we want to do it as a 20 minute session or whether we want to submit a workshop. Because if we wanted to submit a workshop, we might be able to submit the same thing that we submitted for um, EU if people thought that it went well in Brussels and wanted to do the same thing. Or if we wanted to just do a, a 20 minute session, in which case it'd be more like a more like a presentation. Or we could set it up and do something like a panel, although 20 minutes really isn't necessarily enough for that. Uh, well, I would say that the, the workshop in Brussels worked pretty well in terms of bringing more people and at least awareness of how we work and the kind of metrics we are dealing with. So having, I mean, and I say this, and I'm not attending an open source summit this year, so in North America, so it's probably on you that you are going there. So I was not in Brussels, but what I heard was that it was really good. And I did see the outcome that came from the workshop. And as far as I remember, we merged pretty much all of that into our repository. So it was really quality, good outcome. Um, yeah, I'm all in favor of running that again. Who will be at the open source? Um, North America for running this, who has also been in Brussels. Um, I'll, I'll be there. So I'd be, I'd be happy to maybe co-run it with you if you wanted. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I'm happy to run it. I was just hoping to have some experience from someone who already. So we have two volunteers. Two volunteers. Woo. Thank Do you. we have the <laughs> uh, submission text from last time and we can just recycle it. It should be, uh, we didn't actually submit it last time because we submitted a 20 minute session and then decided to do a workshop. So it wasn't in the CFP, but it should be on the website. Oh, um, that's right. I'll pull it up. So here's the link to the website. Um, while I'm waiting for it to load. It's at the end. Perfect. I can take the action item of submitting this after our call. Okay, then that settles it for me. Is there any other need for discussion on the matter? Then we can move on to metrics, releasing metrics. Now, of course, I'm trying to find the file that Matt keeps referencing. Okay, here it is. Yep, I'm posting it in the minutes. I'm going to call it the release tracking document. Okay. 
So if you open the spreadsheet, last time we, or in the past, we went through highlighting and voting which ones we think were pretty much good to go. Might need a little polishing, but then should be ready. Um, versus others where we think we need a bit more work and the ones in blue are the ones where we don't have much and we're thinking about creating those pages. So my proposal is for today to start with everything in green um, and follow the release process that Matt outlined. So in his releasing MD, he gives us a checklist of things that we need to do for each metric. I'm posting it in the document in our minutes. So it's the releasing MD file. So my proposal is that we go through metric by metric and um, check the checklist, which involves also going through the metric and making sure that, hey, it actually is a quality that we are comfortable releasing. Mm -hmm. Are we, uh, question here, are we trying to, I guess we are trying to focus on the advanced metrics in terms of the quality of the metric itself. So probably having a goal like I see that we have even diversity close to be released, let's say we have we have yellows and greens. And then the other one would be uh, governance. So having these two main areas would be kind of a good achievement. What do you think? Um, so you were mentioning focus areas, yeah. and I think the work we need to do now is at the metrics level. Okay. So every row that is yellow or green, and mm -hmm. I would just start with the green because they're the most complete, mm -hmm. and getting them ready for release gives us a good idea of what we might be missing in the yellow one. Okay. Versus the other way around, when we start with the ones where we need to do a lot of extra work, then mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it makes sense. I'm so thinking we, about low hanging fruits here. Yeah, we have four. Yes. Shall we share the? How would you like to proceed? Like sharing this one for each, or we go all of us into one and then we decide about well if the release cycle is you know for the NI. What do you think? Um. I think it would make sense to focus all of us on one metric so that we can discuss it. Sure. And maybe one of us shares the screen um, so that we can walk through a metric together. Yeah, uh, I can share my screen if you want. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Which, exactly what document are we looking at? I looked at the two documents that are in chat. And so here is, I'm going to post it. Sorry, I sometimes I post something in the chat and sometimes I just put in the meeting minutes. Oh, okay. I post it in the chat. It's the um, level of completeness document, the spreadsheet, where we have the different colored rows. Gotcha. I got it open. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I like to have them posted in the minutes because the problem is if your if your chat if your Zoom crashes or you close out of chat, you lost all the links. Yes. Um, but on the other hand, it's easier when it's you know we're talking about a specific thing to post it in the chat because then people know what we're talking about. There is a, you do get a transcript at the, when you in recording. Uh, you could post the chat transcript as the YouTube description, perhaps. Um, if that's super important, but I actually like Don's idea better where they end up in the minutes. So yeah. mm -hmm. I like the minutes plus mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, it's here. Okay, perfect. So I guess you should all see my screen. Yes. 
Si, yes. So, okay. Oh. So we go to. Let's start with diversity access tickets because yeah. it's the first one. To, to event diversity. That is green. And then here we go. So, and I have the checklist here, the missing chaos metrics. The first one is metrics must be associated with the chaos working group, check. Metrics must be associated with the working group's focus area, check. Metrics must have an associated question that is being addressed. The Good question one. here is? Are diversity access tickets offered for an event? This is the do only we, question. Do we address it properly? That's the question now. I think I might have written this question. And the more we've talked about questions, the more I'm concerned that this is like a, a yes, no sort of thing. And the same. And so I'm wondering if we should tweak the question mm -hmm. before we release it. 100% agree. Can you scroll down so we can see the uh, measurables that we had, the success metrics? So, yeah, in terms of... Uh, well, so we if, we're, if we're going to rewrite the question, I was just wondering if I could see the sample success metrics. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Here we go. I'm allergic to Likert scales and I'm, I'm, I'm super allergic to Likerts that have an odd number because you're either going to get one, three or five. So if you're going to use a Likert scale, which I would prefer not to use, we should use an even number to, to force people to choose. Was it slightly positive or slightly not positive? So, but that's a fair point. Well, so if you don't like Likert scales, how do you generate, how do you create a survey that can be quickly analyzed using statistical tools? Well, like I said, if you're going to use a Likert scale, use an even number. Um, I understand why they're used. I, I, I for background, I spent years doing remote assessment for Washington State University and everyone loves Likert scales. So I, I get it, but <laughs> like you would see professors submit a, a, a proposed test that would be Likert scale or Likert blocks that would have like 400 items. And it's like, ah, you can't expect the students to have any reasonable answer after the second hundred of items they've answered, but. Uh. I don't know. I, I guess I don't have an alternative for that. Okay. So the perception is survey participants about the perception of diversity access. Wouldn't that also be a true false item? Maybe the availability of discounted student tickets was effective. Yes or no. And also keep in mind that the measurements are, um, they're designed to be, a range of things that people could use. So the idea is that, so me as a, maybe as a community manager for a community, I wouldn't necessarily use all of these questions. I would pick the ones that I thought were gonna give me the most relevant answers for, for what I'm trying to achieve hmm. as a community manager. So you wouldn't necessarily even use all of these. These are really more, um, more to give people a sense for what types of questions they might want to ask people or what types of data they might want to gather. Gotcha, okay. But I do, I do agree that I, I think maybe we shouldn't be prescriptive on what type of Likert scale. I think we should tend to remove where we, where we say the Likert scales, I think we should tend to remove like the one to five and let people, I mean, cause they're gonna do what they want anyways. I don't know that we need to be prescriptive about how many items. 
the the reason why I put one to five there is for those who might not know what Likert scale is. Ah. Uh, mm. Oh, I see. Because we all know it, right? We got a PhD, worked at the university. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a really good point. Really good point. Or we can also say uh, fully agree, agree, somewhat agree, or somewhat not agree, whatever. That's still like your scale. It's just maybe that's more clear. Okay, I, I, I guess I was just over parsing what you were saying there, since now I understand what you're trying to do is explain Likert scale to people who aren't subject matter experts <laughs> in, in, uh, in Likert scales, I get it. Uh, uh, sorry, that's Vladimir. Can I just ask a question? Uh, well, let me first introduce myself, okay? Uh, I'm, mm, well, I, I met some somebody, I'm not sure you, but somebody at KubeCon, uh, there was a panel discussion there. Uh, well, there was a discussion afterwards there. And um, I'm kind of curious in these areas. And I am an event organizer. So I'm, I'm on a program committee for uh, several conferences. So that's why I'm interested in uh, questions and topics like that. Okay. And well, I'm mostly like uh, an event organizer. So when I see question like uh, the availability of uh, discounted uh, tickets was effective in increasing participation of students. I wonder whoever can answer that kind of question. Because, well, if you try to evaluate their like effectiveness of something, you, you need to uh, know the data, right? The ones who do buy tickets, they don't really know. The ones who get the tickets from uh, sponsorship, they don't really know how effective was it, right? I'm, I'm sorry, am I missing point or? No, I think you got a good point here that we have to be maybe more clear at who we are asking these questions. Mm -hmm. So this uh, question is maybe more high level. Maybe that is our top level question that we can put at the top. Um, so in the I was thinking about, oh, Vladimir, I think it was you and Nicole and a couple of extra folks and me discussing at KubeCon. Any problem? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so I, I have indeed two questions that we may use going to your discussion Georg, about this. Uh, it's because I still feel that when we are having all of these metrics and all of these goals, we are measuring this, we're trying to measure two things. First, how diverse my community is. So, for instance, how many uh, underrepresented people are coming to my event and then we can have this, uh, this can be tracked in several ways. And the other one is how inclusive my community is in terms of what are the tools that I'm offering, let's say, to have a more welcoming environment. And then in order to have this more welcoming environment, having perhaps kind of uh, a specific tickets with discount codes may make a difference. So it's something that I don't have an answer if this is actually making a difference. Um, but what I say is that we, we should focus probably the question in these two main areas. Like we can measure at the very end the diversity of the community with all of the demographical areas that we detail in the wiki. And then uh, how are we becoming this diverse? Then we need to answer the question, how inclusive or welcoming my community is. It's not exactly related to your comment, uh, Vladimir, but kind of. Yeah, I see. I think I, I, I see where you're heading to, but for me, it's kind of hard to answer the question like the first one. I, I mean, I cannot really. Well, uh, as a con as a conference organizer, I cannot answer that. As a participant, I cannot answer it either. Mm -hmm. So what, Vladimir, what would you say that is helping you as organizer to create a more welcoming environment or, or to, to have a more diverse set of people attending the conference or participating or speaking? In this case, from an, from an event perspective. I, 
Okay, so sorry for interruption. Let, let, let's just continue and see how, how it plays. So shall I, shall I repeat the, shall I say again the question? Uh, well, uh, I, what, was it a question? I just didn't get it. Okay, sorry. I, I thought you, I thought you did clarify, clarification, not, not a question. Okay, okay, so I, I try again, sorry. So the question is, you as organizer, so you have experience, uh, well, building or creating events. Yep. Um, so on your experience, what's, what is helping you to have a more diverse um, uh, attendee, set of attendees and speakers? Um, at the same time, how are you uh, creating a welcoming environment? And in this case, from, from, from the event perspective, so just let's say uh, from the event context. Okay, okay, that's that, that's a really good question, and there there is a I can share some experience on that, and I can share some troubles with that uh, as well. So I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, the the focus of today's meeting is to move the metrics forward. So while while this is really important conversation to have, um, it's I think a little out of scope what we wanted to accomplish today. So the point that I mean that you're making is that this particular question is not precise enough and we don't have an audience to actually answer it. So maybe the simplest solution would be to remove it and then to move on. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking about move, moving the metrics forward. Yeah, but I... I'm I'm a little bit reluctant to remove it just because it might be useful to help some people think about the types of questions that they could ask. Um, and again, we wouldn't expect every event organizer to ask all of these questions. Um, they're really just to give people kind of a sense for what they could ask. So if, for example, um, discounted tickets was a big program for a particular conference, then maybe people would have opinions about whether or not that um, would would be able to answer that question. I think for a lot of attendees, like attendees for KubeCon, would not be able to answer that question, for example. But attendees of a very small conference where this is a big part of it, so things like, I don't know if you guys remember Ada Camp, but something like that, maybe, maybe attendees of those types of conferences would be able to answer it. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, Vladimir, what do you think if we move uh, the discussion to the mailing list. No, that, that's perfectly fine with me. Okay. Are you are you in the mailing list, by the way? Uh, not sure. Okay. So there's a, there are two mailing lists for chaos. One is for the overall chaos community, and one specifically for the diversity and inclusion working group. Do you mind sharing? I can I can share the link here in a moment. Okay. Yeah. Um, so because. <laughs> We're working collaboratively as a group. I put a Google Doc in the minutes mm -hmm. to edit where we can edit the raw text of the markdown file and then merge it back. Okay, then I can serve you. Uh -huh. Yeah, I, I think that helps us uh, because right now I feel a little powerless because we cannot actually make changes. <laughs> So we need a version we can all edit. Is that going to be easy though to merge back into a markdown file? The well, changes? I don't know. <laughs> I've never tried editing. A, isn't there a collaborative markdown editor? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I think there was an Etherpad like implementation with Markdown syntax. Yeah, I'm just thinking it's really hard to tell what's changed when you. But however, however you want to do it, sorry, just keep going.
So maybe what I take out of this um, conversation is that we might need a disclaimer saying these are not definitive are, or this is not a set of questions that have to be asked, but these are ideas um, to spark thinking about what questions to ask. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I think uh, the title of number four is sample success metrics, which to me indicates that I can pick and choose just like these are sample objectives and sample strategies. Yeah, that's fair. And hey, if someone has a question and they ask on the mailing list or contact us, then it's good. We spark some conversation. Hmm. Yep. So maybe it might help if instead of editing the document, if we did um, suggestions, and that way you could see what's changed and you rather than accepting the suggestions, you could make it easier to see what you need to change in the um, markdown file. Yeah, that's fine. So we need to change the question. Yeah. And Daniel, you had ideas for questions we could put here? Um, hmm. let, let me reward them. So. I made a suggestion. So those are very high level questions. Um, and we are currently on the diversity and access ticket metric. Yeah, I don't think those questions really have anything to do with the diversity and access tickets. Mm -hmm. They're great questions for diversity and inclusion in general, but yeah. we need something related specifically to the diversity access tickets. Well, I was I was framing them as uh, two questions coming from the from the first one. So again, I still feel that we we are using certain tools to be inclusive. So in this case, diversity access tickets. So this is a tool. Yeah. And then the result is the diversity of my community. So then we need to measure these two areas. Yeah. So I think what, it's all about. what Don wrote here has both parts. Mm -hmm. Because okay. it has how is, and then we have the measure, mm -hmm. the diversity access ticket, used to increase result diversity and inclusion. So mm -hmm. cause effect. OK. Then I'm removing my suggestion. 
So, so I think you, you did do see both parts. You just mm -hmm. were separating them out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is good validation that we have a good question now. What do you think, Tom? <laughs> Well, yeah, I wrote it, so I'm good with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's definitely better than the first one, the first question we had, which was a little too binary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think uh, that was the, the big thing we needed to change here. Um, so then the next item on the releasing chaos metrics checklist is metrics must have an associated detail page providing more information about the metric. That's the document we are working on right now. Which is the wiki page. Wiki page? What wiki page? I mean, this is, this is a copy of the wiki page. That's uh, copy of the GitHub page. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, it's a GitHub page. Yeah, right. yeah. We moved it to GitHub. A year ago or so. <laughs> it used to be in a wiki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. The next item on the checklist is metrics must be consistently referenced across the chaos organization. I think we have that. The so naming question, focus area, name question, listing in detail page, name question, listing in aggregate page. I think we have that in the DNI working group across all the metrics. Mm -hmm. I don't think we have naming discrepancies like we see in more evolving working groups. Yeah, I think we should double check that right before the release for each of the release metrics, yeah. just to make sure that, like for this one, we changed the question. So we need to make sure we change the question on some of the other pages. Because mm -hmm. isn't the question listed on the, is it the focus area page? Mm -hmm. Yeah the, question. yeah, the question needs to be, when we update the document, also be updated in the focus area. Yeah. 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 So this here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so based on this releasing chaos metrics and having done this by example on the DNI access tickets, I think the main Activity for us as we go through these pages mm -hmm. is to make sure that we have a good question that we talk about because all the other things we already took care of. Mm -hmm. And then we just need to say, yes, we checked it and mark it as ready for release in the document. Does it make sense if we have some kind of checkbox at the beginning of the metric page? What checkbox do you mean? The releases, the releasing cycle. So we have this markdown, like having this at the end of the metric page, or I don't know. Like this metric has been validated following this process. Or um, so the way that I understand Matt is he would like us to mark it inside the spreadsheet. So I just put okay. ready for release here in the spreadsheet. Okay. That seems reasonable to me. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I think we're good with diversity access ticket then. Mm -hmm. We just need someone to make a merge request or pull request. <laughs> GitLab and GitHub terminology mixing up in my head. <laughs> um, I can do that since I have the document in my Google Drive. Okay. Then we can move on to the next metric. Mm -hmm. Which one is it? Code of conduct at event. But when you are submitting the pull request, remember to update the question in the wiki page to here. Yeah, in the, in the list of metrics, that focus area. 
Yeah, sharing this. Yeah. My laptop is being super slow. Like, I, I check could have conducted like events and it's not updating. Maybe you were missing some correction. Well, it's, it's also that I cannot move to any other window right now. It just froze everything. Ooh. Actually, it's so, this page. I may have to restart my laptop. Okay. Oh, it's the three of us now? Vladimir and Brian Ray left. Yeah. Um, We're at the core group. <laughs> oh, uh, Don, did you uh, plan to stay two hours or just one hour? Um, I can stay until five o'clock. So I can stay for an hour and a half. Okay. Okay. So I guess six o'clock your time. Okay. Uh, you can move on without me. I just don't see anything mm. right now. Yeah, so I'm restarting. Or I can sit next to you. So we are in the same room. <laughs> there is proof. Um, there is proof. Proof that you're in the same room. Okay. The one thing I noticed when you when you were on the um, individual page was that the um, there was a typo. There's a question was repeated twice. The word question. If you go back to the other tab with the uh, here uh, and then the. Uh, Code of conduct at event page. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, three times indeed. <laughs> yeah. But I think that question looks okay. So the, so the previous question we had was how are diversity access tickets? Used to increase diversity and inclusion for an event. Mm -hmm. And here. Here we say uh, supports diversity and inclusion. Yeah, so here we are talking about increase in the previous one. And this one we are talking about support. I like support better. I do like support better. I think that's a, I think we should change it in the other one. Okay. Yeah, I'll do that. Awesome. It was my suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Don, did you go through the rest of the metric? Uh, for which one? The code of oh. conduct? Yeah. No. Uh -uh. Okay. I'm creating the, or I'm refreshing the Google Doc. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm back online. I'm loading all my pages. Now it's Don and me. <laughs> yep. And it claims I'm the host. That should switch back to Georg when he comes back on. Yeah. I was not planning to come back. Oh, okay. But you were recording. And so now I'm recording. Mm -hmm. Is it recording to the cloud? And is that actually still valid? Yes, it records to Matt's profile. Okay. Because Matt is the one who created the Zoom room. Okay. So and so then, then when I drop early, it'll shift back to someone else? Yes. Okay. I'm the only one. You'll be the only one. <laughs> I can talk to myself. <laughs> I think when you leave, you're leaving too. <laughs> cool. Okay. I'm kind of comparing uh, this metric with the previous one. So for instance, well, we do have a description. Um, in the original description, we go for uh, yeah, here. It's like, okay. 
on this that when sharing. So it says diversity access tickets can enable community members to attend events and encourage new members to join. Uh, so it's like we have a brief description about well this is uh, what this is about and the goal of this and then what these kind of actions may enable from the community perspective. So perhaps from um, here in the code of conduct, we need to do like, well, use similar keywords like this enables this kind of actions either from the organizers as we can see here or for the people attending the event. I don't know if it makes sense. I like the idea of having the similar structure in mm -hmm. of the descriptions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I posted in the meeting minutes a link to the editable Google Doc okay. version so we can start working on this. Oh, you said in the minutes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, Don, are you still following uh, through the shared document? What? Are you still following through the shared screen or I stop sharing? Um, both. So I'm editing on my screen, but. Okay, no worries. Then I keep. I think it's better if you share because then we can still make sure we're looking at the same thing. I have okay. a question. Should, that, should we remove the disclaimer caveat? Now that we are getting this ready for release? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, actually, we should do that on the other one too. Okay. Okay, so what's the structure for the description? One is how this tool can help with DNI. Mm -hmm. And then how community members react to the tool. Is that the two sections? Mm. And then how to interpret the metric. Those are the three paragraphs that I see in the so uh, diversity access one. So here the in the diversity access ticket, mm -hmm. the the first one is about what what it is mm -hmm. and how it can help with diversity. Yeah. The second one is how specific community members react to it. Mm -hmm. And the third one is um, what kind of metric it is or how it can be interpreted. And this can serve as retention and recruitment metric. Is what you said? Well, I, I was classifying yeah, yeah. the type of paragraph, yeah. And so my question is, is that the same structure we want for all of them? I think that seems reasonable. I sort of reformatted the description based on this. Mm -hmm. um, basically, I separated it into the, the first bit, which is kind of what it is. The second bit, which is um, kind of what it means to attendees, I think was kind of what you said. And the third part is, you know, what kind of metrics it, what kind of, what it does. Mm -hmm. And we can add content to all three of those. Does that seem reasonable? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I was looking for some extra thing to. Yeah.
Are we change all of the Laker scales to one four? Yeah, change it to one to four. So, and then for resources, I'm thinking about linking to um, say Shark probably has some resources. Yeah, we just need to make sure that we um, that we keep it a little bit separate from general code of conduct stuff because the general code of conduct stuff is covered under governance and this is just the bit that's specific to events. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know how much of Sage's stuff is specific to events and how much of it's kind of general code of conduct stuff for communities. I just don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Um, I'm going to put a comment here. I'm waiting for websites to open. The internet is not being very quick here. I can open the website as well. Then I was really. Well, I was thinking of doing a parallel looking okay. for resource while you worked on other parts of the document. Yeah, I was having a look at the rest of the document is, and it's quite similar and coherent with the rest of the, with the other version we have for even diversity. So, makes sense to me. So unless we are looking for extra resources. Didn't PyCon hire Sage Shark for Code of Conduct at their event? I don't know. I mean, I do know that that's what Sage is focused on now is consulting around this, so it wouldn't surprise me. But I'm I'm not sure exactly which conferences have engaged Sage. I think it was uh, PyCon 18. That's at least what my Google search is saying. Attending procedure for reporting code of conduct incidences. So here, I'm just gonna post it in the document and then you can take a look to see if you think that's a good resource. Mm -hmm. For, because we're, we're doing two things, right? One is to um, provide a metric around it and the other part is um, to demonstrate best practices and help people improve the metrics. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the DNI metrics that we have are very action oriented, mm -hmm. promoting best practices. Or here's a blog post from 2018. Maybe that's a better one. There's also at the very bottom of that link you just posted has it's been that procedure's been adapted from the Ada Initiatives Guide Conference Anti Harassment Responding to Reports. Wonder if that's a better. I'm opening that up right now. Oh, 
Don't you said this one at the very end or any, any other? Yeah, that's that's the link I was talking about. It has a lot more detail. Mm -hmm. Sure, we can update as well. I would add both of them, to be honest. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, you're really or actually, if you if you there's a landing page that's um, one level up from that. Uh, here, I'll put it in the conference anti harassment. Is that... No, it's this one, I think. Yep, yep. I think that's a good one. Because that's that has links to a whole bunch of other resources and further reading. Okay. Yep. Which I think is probably good. Okay, so we have three resources. Mostly about PyCon and the Sage Sharp mm -hmm. and Geek Feminism. It's a start. Yep. Oh, I think that's good. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. I'll also take this on to create a pull request. Cool. Okay. Uh, anything else on this metric? No, I think it's... You're making good progress. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm going to mark this as ready for release, even though it's still pending. A pull request. And then family friendliness is the next one. <laughs> the, the the old version here, I'm going to share the old version before I copy paste the new version. And we still called it uh, kit friendliness. Uh, yeah, again, I think we need to edit the um, question again for the same reason. Yeah, mm -hmm. one second. I'm about to there, update the document. Okay. No more. There. Okay. Now we can start editing. Yep. I think we can we can just say how does the it doesn't, uh, whoops. It still doesn't necessarily get at the diversity and inclusion bit, though, either. No, true. Uh, how about this? And inclusion by powering. Oh, sorry. Oops. <laughs> sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> okay, how does that? How does event how does the event support diversity and inclusion by empowering those who care for children to attend? Or should those be it sounds reversed? complicated right now? The question itself sounds too complicated? Yeah. How does the event support DNI by empowering those who care for children? To attend. There's two attendants throwing me off. Bye. Um, I think I'm going to take another crack at that. How does 
Um, and I don't think it's, well, I guess it's family friendly. Um, if, if we are using the uh, concept of family, family might be any type of family without the specific need of having children. So, yeah. I don't know. I mean, for instance, it would be uh, great if for some reason I can bring my couple because this will help to have some more, you know, days in family without the need of having children. Yeah. So I don't know about the specific name of this. I mean, this is the idea. I don't know. What about something like this? How does um, empowering families to attend the event together support diversity and, and inclusion? Mm -hmm. yeah. How does empowering families to attend the event together support diversity and inclusion of the event? Yeah. Because otherwise we have a more generic question. Yeah, no, agreed. How does it plan for me? Okay, yeah, I like that. I'm not sure about empowering. Enabling? Yeah, here yeah. I'll change that since I'm Just enabling families to attend the event together, support diversity and inclusion of the event. We can probably get rid of the event here just to make it streamlined. So how, how does enabling families to attend together support diversity and inclusion of the event? Yep. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay, and then the description we also have again Right now, only one paragraph, and we wanted to have three, so. Hmm. Let's rethink that a little bit. Do we, um, I'm wondering if we're making the descriptions too wordy by standardizing them. Okay. Uh, I don't know what the right answer is. But what I don't want to do is expand the description just because we feel like we need more paragraphs mm -hmm. or need to be, uh, we can be, yeah, I don't know. So I, I like the idea of providing a classification, what type of information or what type of knowledge we get from this metric mm -hmm. what we have with that last sentence that this metric can serve as so and such and such um, but everything else i'm not sold that we need to have two separate paragraphs okay question here so in the title, about, yeah, in the title with family friendliness, and um, in the question we are talking about families to attend together. And then for the rest of the ticket, let's say, or the markdown file, we have we are once and again focusing on children. So, what about bringing this back to the children friendliness or? I didn't remember the discussion about having family. But this is so focused on well structure yeah. on the children. And, and family is more, there's more ways to be a caregiver. Mm -hmm. um, elderly people, sick yeah. family members that need to be taken care of. So, hmm. 
We could strip out we could strip out some of the mentions of children to make it just a little bit less. Yeah, but then you, I mean it's it's like we are changing the the markdown. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Is there a reason why you didn't want to edit it? Also, it seems that there were people that agreed in the green status of this, basically, yeah. Gerton, Sarah, Armstrong. So, updating the markdown sounds to me like this may not be, I mean, we may need to re ask them about this. Oh, I think it's still in the spirit. I mean, I think when we had that discussion, it was these are these are the ones that seem like they're about ready, but we didn't talk about not making any changes to them before the release. I think we all assumed that there would be some, I assumed anyways, at least, that there would be some small amount of cleanup required. Thumbs up. Yes. Okay. I agree. Then let's go. I didn't want to remove any work. Although, to be fair, I think once uh, once we get the pull requests out, I think we should send an email to the mailing list for the diversity and inclusion mailing list and say, mm -hmm. these are the pull requests with the changes that we're proposing. Mm -hmm. Let us know if, people, if you have any you know, issues and give people yeah. however many days for lazy consensus. Exactly. So yeah, the, the language we know, we moved the focus on children, the questions are still very children focused. That's, I think that's all right. Yeah. This is something we can fix if someone ever says, what about... And well, so and realistically, I think if we make some of the questions more generic, I think that's fine because I, th I think for most people, this is probably reversed to children. Yep. Mm -hmm. And if you make it more generic, then the questions lose their utility. Yeah. Because right now you can take these and it's pretty clear what they mean. If you make them more generic, then they're also more vague again. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, resources. What resources can we provide? Any ideas off the top of your head? Anyone? No.
Yeah, I can't think of any resources. I just did a quick Google search and I'm not finding anything particularly useful. I found a PDF from the audience agency where they are talking about making a film festival family friendly. But it's very specific yeah. to cinema and monsters running around the island. <laughs> what we can do is just say, um, none, please suggest some if you have any. Mm -hmm. I found an academic paper on political science conferences. Do they have good suggestions that might translate? Uh, I don't know, because I don't really have access to the article. Where is it published? Uh, Taylor Francis. Here, I'll send, I'll send you the link. Can you put it in the chat and I can see if I have access to my university? So uh, I'm still uh, not kicked out of the system. No, but I'll put it in the doc because I'd have to send it to myself in Slack and then, uh, here you go. You can copy it and take it out of the doc. The minutes doc? We can maybe open. Oh, which doc? Oh, I just threw it in the resources. Oh, here, gotcha. Yeah. Um, let me search. Found it online. Although we probably want, we don't want to link to a resource that nobody can access, to be fair. Mm, true. I was, I was thinking about doing the unethical thing and actually uploading the PDF. Oh, <laughs> mm. I see. Maybe we can look for this in Google. No, let's just, yeah, let's, uh, let's ask around. Maybe Emma or Nicole or somebody who's not on the call right now, Sarah, might have other suggestions. Yeah, fair point. Okay, let's move it. So this is ready to go. Yeah. I think we can leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And then we have 15 more minutes, so we can do one more. Yeah. And that is leadership mentorship, I believe. So here is the spreadsheet. What we can do later is that we upload the request content leads. Okay, the document is ready. I, well, it's, the link is posted. I'm updating the text now. Okay. Yeah. I'm reusing old Google documents that we used originally to create these. Mm -hmm. Seems reasonable to me. Yeah, so this is. This question looks pretty good. Hmm. Well, we, we kept using support, so should we use support? Supporting diversity and inclusion in our project? No, to me. Oh, no, that's a good point. I do think we should get rid of the word increasing. Yes, I was not suggesting. 
Okay. In our project, that's right. We are now in leadership for projects, no longer in events. <laughs> Oh, this one has tons of resources. Awesome. Yep. I remember putting them there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So we decided not to, in the description, not to include the type of metric because I'm feeling that all of our DNI metrics are retention and inclusion metrics. Yeah, I, the more I looked at that, the more it seemed like we kept just putting the same thing for all of them. So I'm going to remove it from the others. In terms of mentorship, does it make sense? Uh, this might be at the level of the foundation. So, for instance, the Penestack Foundation, they have several mentorship programs. Yep. Uh, does it make sense to have this metric somewhere here? Because they have the upstream program, they have uh, outreach, for instance, they've been participating just like in, in a specific project or, or ecosystem. They may have several ways to approach mentorship. So what, what's your question? So the, the, the comment here is if we go to the metrics, we have number of mentees, uh, mentors. So we are talking once and again about the people. And you want to talk about the mentorship program? There's one about the projects, which is a variety of projects participating. And then perhaps we may use like another like variety of mentorship programs across the foundation project ecosystem. Yeah, I think that's good. That's one of the things I like about Kubernetes is there's a whole bunch of ways that we sort of mentor people. Mm. Um, and, and that's way more effective than just having one way. And perhaps in addition to the number of mentorship program, uh, we can go for the, uh, how you say, the expertise you need to have in any of those. But in some cases, it's only like an entry point to kind of present the community, understand what's going on and the yeah. main area, which is even perhaps, yeah. And then we can have like, from a development perspective, you can help here, so then you need to understand this process and workflow. And is it, sorry, getting back to the number of mentorship programs, is it really the number that's important or is it the variety? It's the variety. So this was mostly my discussion now, like if we have this variety of mentorship programs, if they are covering like the several things we may want, like newcomers or more advanced people or, or outreach or So I don't know. Yeah. How about this? Variety of mentorship programs across a project ecosystem targeting different contribution levels? They work. Yeah. What do you think, Don? Um, yeah, I like it. I'm curious about the, whether the whether we've worded some of these correctly because these are sort of quantitative metrics. So like um, Number of contributions from mentees is pretty clear how you measure that. Mm -hmm. And looking at some of the other, like the event ones, we had a lot of the section was really kind of um, questions that you would use to 
to yeah. answer that. And this seems a little bit more general. Like I wouldn't necessarily know how to measure the variety of mentorship programs. Mm -hmm. sure. I think it's important. I wonder, I actually, so I think it's super important actually. And I wonder if this is more of an objective than a success metric. I don't, I don't know. Contributions. I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking it. <laughs> yeah, I, I see your point. Yeah, I'm just not sure what to do about it. I think the objective is to make sure we have mentorship programs across different levels of contribution. Although I don't know if contribution levels is a term actually anyone understands besides me. <laughs> um, well, I would argue that people probably understand it differently depending on who you talk to. Which is still good because they <laughs> don't think about it. Yeah. Yeah, because in Kubernetes, we talk about the contribution ladder, which is how you move up from like org member to reviewer to approver to whatever. And we would look at those as the contributor levels. So I think it depends on a project by project basis and who you talk to, how you would define contribution levels. Mm -hmm. Have you can go for uh, examples, and this is what we mean. Like this is in Kubernetes community and this is in OpenStack community, some examples of the things we, we are discussing, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, I don't know that it matters. I think if we, if we give people enough, enough information that they need to put the questions together that are right for their community, hmm. um, I think we've done, I think we've done a good job with the metric. Yeah, I do think you pointed out something really important here is that these are more outcome driven, whereas the others we've looked at was more collection method oriented in the okay. way that formulated. Yeah, maybe that's the difference. Yeah. So we could go ahead and we only have five minutes left. Um, we work all of these as interview and survey questions, and then I think they would be parallel with what we had in the others. I'm okay with that if, that, if that makes sense to you. It makes sense to me, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, because the sample strategies for the others were like, analyze conference websites, interview certain people, or survey them. Mm -hmm. And then we had questions to use within each strategy. And here in mentorship, what are the strategies here? I think this is more work than we have time for right now. Yeah. Although, I mean, I'd be comfortable if you wanted to just take a shot at it, put it in a pull request and submit it and get feedback from people. Yeah, we can leave this as it is, probably. You wanna just leave it? Well, we can either leave it or you can take a shot at it offline. Yeah, I mean, send a pull request and then start some conversation. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, then we have the four. We have four that we talked about today and make them a little bit more release ready. It's <laughs> good. Yeah, I feel like those are pretty pretty good shape. Actually, yeah. Still means we have the more difficult ones still to go. <laughs> True.
Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, shall we leave it at that and reconvene next week? Yeah, I think so. We can now send yeah. it to first. I mean, I have to go. If you two want to continue continue recording and continue to work on them. I mean, we said it was going to be a two hour hackathon. We don't need to stop just because I have to stop. Yeah. No, I still have um, to actually creating the pull request. Okay, cool. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and drop off. Okay. Thanks. Uh, good evening, Don. Thanks you for too. joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.